Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to our series of uh, vending tips for both beginners and veterans. Mostly for beginners, you've gotten into the business. This is video number three. These are released Saturday mornings and we welcome comments. If we have some questions uh, on your end that you have not seen answered, uh, kindly put them in the uh, comments below. Be more than happy to uh, address those. Today we're going to talk a little bit about your first location. The move-in, um, once you're in there, how to retain that location. I, t I touched a little bit on video number two about being professional. When you go in there as a vendor, especially as a service person, depending on the location, you need to be cheerful, respectful, greet the people, when you go by the uh, front desk, whether it's the receptionist or whether it's the CEO, you walk by his office, don't butt in. On the way out, ask him, is there anything that you can do better? Do they have any requests for products? Uh, I recommend you put a little packet of post-it notes on the front of the snack machines. Which products would you like to see? Maybe you don't have Cheez-Its in there and somebody really likes Cheez-Its back there in the warehouse. So anyways, guys, when you go in to service your equipment, go in, make a list, see what you need. Don't make a mess. Don't wheel in a cart with 60 Doritos to fill your machine when you only need 12 or 24 and you have all these open boxes all over the floor and all over the tables. You want to be as incognito as you can. Some people insist on bringing their kids. I can tell you horror stories about two of my vendors losing their two biggest spots because they insisted on bringing their children. Now some children, very well mannered. They're a part of their business. Other children, maybe not so. If you bring kids into a facility and they're into things and they don't mind, it doesn't look good on you. So anyways, I'm not a children uh, hater by any chance. I have a child of my own, but well-mannered children, it's up to you. However, <laughs> you kind of see where I'm going with this, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go any further. So, look presentable. Have a work shirt on. Um, you go in there with a holy T-shirt, and you have holes in your knees. You got crummy shoes on. It doesn't look good. You're touching these people's food, whether it's in a package or not, or it's in a bottle, or it's in a can. So anyways, your first location is the important one. You want to have it looking good. You don't want to have any hand-printed titles, hand-printed strips, hand-printed signs. You want all the professional labels. Pricing labels, it has to be easy to read. You want people to know those chips are a dollar, dollar and a quarter, whatever. Now, if you have a snack machine, and a lot of people have gone to this, and I don't blame them because it's hard to keep up with pricing. If you don't put labels on the shelves, put a sign that says, to see price, press selection, or to display price, press selection. Just put that with a P-Touch label, maybe in two spots, down low, up above, on your snack machine. And uh, it's self-explanatory. It's a little bit tough to keep up with. So, guys, spare parts. Now that you have your first location out, maybe you only have a snack machine and a soda machine. Do you have any spare parts in case something goes down? If a coin mech goes out, a bill validator quits, a motor in a shelf quits, or worse, a board quits, or maybe the cooling system, do you have somebody to call? Do you have somebody on speed dial, a mechanic? A lot of areas, a lot of different very qualified people. If you're somewhat rural, that could be a problem. People learn a lot from YouTube. However, parts availability is not a lot of times overnight. What if you need a cooling deck for your soda machine and now it's a Monday and you're in a spot where it's 110 degrees out and you tell the admin people, gee, I've ordered parts. Well, some people are uh, okay with that. However, most of them know that they're not getting cold sodas and that's probably when they begin to look for another vendor. Do you have the proper tools? Do you have the right nut driver to take out the bill validator? Do you have 
the correct screwdrivers to get in there. There are certain things you need, but believe it or not, with vending, if you carried in a small tool kit with maybe a dozen tools, that's going to get you by 95% of the time. There are not a lot of specialty tools other than nut drivers, a Phillips, sometimes a flat screwdriver, maybe a pliers, maybe even a channel locks depending on uh, what you're working with. So be prepared. Have tools. Carry them with you. It's no fun to have to go back in an hour or the next morning because you have forgotten something. So anyways, your first spot, let's say it's on warehouse row. Each time when you go there, let's say you have to travel 20 minutes from your house. Bring some cards. Visit the neighbors. Once you get friendly with the people that work there that you see day in, day out using your machines, maybe they have a friend that works up the street. Maybe they have a brother-in-law that owns the machine shop, it's, uh, whether it's across the street or across the town. Start talking to these people. Um, you will be surprised that when people see vendors they ask questions. A lot of times it's, gee, how'd you get the business? You know, do you make any money? Blah, blah, blah. You may not want to share a lot of that information, especially the money part. It's an honest living. Nobody gets rich overnight here. But as far as expansion goes, word of mouth is your least expensive. You're not paying for advertising. Have some brochures in your vehicle with you. I highly recommend Vistaprint for making your own brochures. Um, we don't want to spam the lunchroom and put these things all over the place. A business card or a service sticker on the machines is all you need. People are sharp. If they have somebody or maybe they own a, a business that's a part-time business and they need a soda machine, trust me, they will see ABC Vending Service with a phone number and they will know who to go to. Now, as far as a website, people always ask, do you have a website? Even if it has nothing to do with the service in their little lunchroom with their 60 people, they like to see images. They want to see your product line. They always ask, what kind of products do you have? We all know we sell Coke and Pepsi and Mountain Dew and Snickers and M&Ms and Doritos and Lay's, but they like to be able to see them in print on a website. So if you have an abcvending.com website, even if it's just a simple three or four page site that explains your company, you want to explain things, most importantly, that you are insured, that you are licensed in the city of XYZ. Insurance guys, whether you get one location or you buy a route, starting route with maybe a dozen, you need liability insurance. Liability insurance, I don't want to say is money wasted because if you ever need it, you need it. But every year when you write that check for $500, $600, $800, and sometimes more depending on the size of your business, that's money that has to be put on the back of the people that are buying your products. So when you're selling those chips for a dollar and you think you're making 40 cents or 50 cents, you got to remember, a nickel of that might be to insurance. The other nickel might be vehicle costs. So keep that in mind when you're pricing things. People always like low cost. When you're in an employee situation, which is what we call a closed in spot. In other words, it's in a lunchroom. The only people that are going to use your equipment are the 60 or 80 or 100 people that work there. Outside people, other than maybe delivery people, truck drivers, they're not going to be able to use it. So when they ask for a commission, you have to explain to that admin person that the commission is just something added to the product costs. It is put on the back of the employee that maybe is only getting paid 12 or $13 an hour, so he's got to pay an extra 10 or 15 cents for his soda because the facility wants a commission. If they're dead set on some sort of a, a commission and maybe they have a Christmas party, maybe they have a summer picnic, it's a lot easier to give out four, six, eight cases of soda for their once or twice a year little get together for the employees. It's just a lot easier. It's a lot less bookkeeping. You'll make more money in the long run. So commissions, people always say, gee, how much should I pay? I'm not a big commission person. Now in places like hotels, you're going to pay a commission. You might pay 30% 
which is strong, but you may, may also be selling your bottles at 3 and $4. Here in Las Vegas, where I am, a lot of these hotel towers that have Coke and Pepsi machines in there, the bottles are 3 and $4. I've seen it myself, and I've heard that Coke pays a 50% commission, but this is the Coke Corporation that has their own route. Of course, they're selling a bottle for $3.00 you know their cost is less than $1.50, so they're still making money, product awareness, they have the Cokes, the, the logo out there, etc. So, anyways guys, commission, <coughs> I'm not a strong advocate for, especially in employee situations, because ultimately in the end, the employee is the one that pays this commission. So, anyways guys, I hope some of these tips have helped you. Looking forward to your comments. We will have these videos out every Saturday as far as the business end of vending. And every Wednesday, I will release a video on tips as far as the mechanical parts of your equipment. How to fix a bill changer, how to clear a coin jam and a coin mech, maybe a little bit about shelf motors, motors in uh, soda machines. So that's the Wednesday video. And uh, like I said, this one here, this is number three of a series. And... Uh, we wish you well, and we look forward to your comments. For now, Doug at Doug's World Tour, out.